confused and worried when I'm trying to find out where my baby's at. We just hear all kinds of gunshots going off, and then we're over here all scared. We continue our coverage of that mass shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, here at midday. 19 kids are dead, along with two adults, one of which we know was a teacher. There are a lot, there's a lot of information here, but we know today grief counselors are being called in to support the school's students, staff, families, as they come to groups with what, what just happened yesterday. Now, here in our studio, we thought it was really important to talk about how parents can talk with their children about this. It's such a tough topic. Mm -hmm. We have Sarah Long in here with the McNabb Center. Thank you for coming in. Um, you know, we were even texting last night, just couldn't believe what had happened. How do parents tackle this? Yeah, I just want to say, first of all, I'm so sad to hear about what happened. Um, these conversations and dealing with mass violence can be really hard for families to navigate. So I think there's a couple of things that families can do. Um, one is to make sure that they're giving their children a space to process and talk about what's happened. Um, that can be a really hard thing for a parent, but in doing so, it's important to recognize that kids have a variety of feelings when, when something like this happens. Some kids feel really, really afraid. Some kids feel um, mad that something mm -hmm. like this happened. Um, and so it's important for parents to kind of normalize any feelings. And, and we're actually going to have you just move your hair over your shoulder here real quickly. There you go. Um, I don't want people to miss the important information that you're sharing. Yeah, really helping those kids realize what happened. And talk about maybe how kids can sometimes react to that. You know, it's not always going to be pleasant. Yeah, kids can have really distressing reactions. Um, and it's important to recognize that kids don't even have to be living through the experience directly. Just hearing about things like this can be really traumatic. So some kids will feel really, really anxious and afraid. Um, some kids will feel mad and overwhelmed. Um, and it's important for parents to kind of prepare to answer some of the hard questions that will come up. Yeah. That's what I was going to bring up next yeah. because kids, they can be so unfiltered and they are going to ask the tough questions. Yeah, and so as parents, we can try to prepare as best we can to kind of expect um, questions around how do I explain to my kids about death and dying? How do I explain to them about why bad things happen to good people? Um, and how do I explain to them what it's going to be like moving forward in this aftermath? You know, and one thing, um, in terms of, we already said today was the last day of school for some of our schools in our region. Some parents might say, I don't want to bring this up right now. We're about to start summer. Maybe how would you encourage people to have this conversation or why it's so important? It's good to be proactive because um, information is shared so rapidly these days that the likelihood that a child is not going to hear something is probably pretty low. Um, and you have an opportunity to really um, take the lead with your family and helping your child to navigate it. So it's better to be proactive. Now you guys have a bunch of resources for families, for students at the McNabb Center. Kind of tell us through some of those. Yeah, so some children might experience um, a lot of distress in the aftermath of what's happened. Um, and so if you feel like as a parent what you're doing is still not helping your child or your child is still really struggling, that's when it might be helpful to reach out for professional help. So all parents in our community um, can reach out to their insurance company to find mental health care, um, who, you know, whoever covers your mental health care. Um, and then specifically the McNabb Center is a community mental health organization, offers extensive mental health supports to kids and their families, um, starting at birth all the way through the lifespan. All right, well, thank you so much, Sarah, for coming in. Hopefully, we've helped some families as they have this very tough conversation. And, of course, we're going to share all of your information. We're going to share this interview online on WATE.com and also on our news app. Again, thank you so much for coming in, and we're going to be right back after this break.